Hello, I had actually finished with Lars Anderson, but I received a few comments on my video agreeing with Lars Anderson on the back river that I felt I'd like to make a video response to instead of just writing. I don't want to discourage anyone from leaving comments on my videos, but please make them sensible, do some thinking, and if there's something you're uncertain about, please do some research. The first one here from Still Pop. Fair point about Lars not providing any viable alternative to a back river. But for you to say men have never run around the woods firing arrows and it's just a Hollywood fiction is absurd. Very, very few confrontations in history between men have been organised battlefield events with lines and ranks under command. Most have been skirmishes in woods. I have no evidence for that, but it stands to reason as 95% of human-occupied Europe used to be covered in forest, and tribal conflict has a longer and more widespread history than regional or international kingmaker conflict. How many battles did France and England have in the Hundred Years' War? 55 in over 100 years less than one every two years on average. Now, how many skirmishes do you think there would have been either between English and French forces or, say, Germanic tribes in that time? Many more. So, yes, men have always fought or had brief contact with enemy forces using bows, in brackets, 10,000-year-old invention, in the woods. Right, still. At no point did I say men have never run around the woods shooting arrows. I asked a question, so why is Lars running around amongst the trees with bow and arrow in the first place? This question does not indicate any statement from me that at no point people had conflicts in woods. Right? I'm asking why is that person last performing this action, running around with bows and arrows, in that location among the trees? Then I ask the question, are there any historical pictures that show us archers used to do this? Why do I ask this question? Because Lars has this thing, he comes up with his fantasies, claims that they are historically accurate, and says, here's a picture to prove it! And I ask him, does Lars have any pictures, any historical pictures or sculptures, I don't mind, that show archers running around among trees? That's what I'm asking for. And I answer the question straight away with no, he hasn't got them. I also explain that the action we see, Lars running around among trees with bow and arrow, is something that he has got from watching Robin Hood films. And... As I say in the video, this is something that Lars himself has claimed is inaccurate. Hollywood films are inaccurate in these regards, is what he says, okay? So, I am saying that he shouldn't be running around the trees if he claims that he takes his sources from historical pictures. Because here, you do not see archers that run around among the trees while shooting at their enemies. It doesn't exist. I'm not saying it never happened. What I'm saying is that Lars is doing his usual thing. He claims something, namely, that the back quiver is useless. His narrator says, back quiver, useless, right? And Lars shows us this by getting caught when trying to draw an arrow from his useless back quiver. Or that when he jumps over a log and deliberately bends over, they fall out. There's a blur Sorry, I'm going to get your name wrong. I'm going to call you Red Dragon, okay? It's written R-Y-D, and then Dragon with a Y too. Red Dragon, I'm not quite sure if you want to pronounce like that. Did a very nice video in which he shows that with a side quiver, you can easily get caught in the next best bush. He does hug the bush a little bit, but all the same, the arrows can get stuck in scrub, right? And he too, when running over a field with no trees on it, spills a lot of his arrows from a side quiver, right? So for Lars to claim the back quiver is useless and to demonstrate this point, he needs trees. I'm asking if in all the other things that he claims, he always has historical pictures that show this is why and this is what happened. 
where is the pitch in that case? And I'm saying his whole idea that you run around the trees and you've got to quickly shoot at something, be it a deer or the sheriff's men, comes from watching films like Robin Hood. Hollywood films that he claimed were inaccurate, right? I am not claiming at any point that there were no conflicts between men in the forests, in the woods or amongst trees. That's one thing. I get a bit irritated if people seemingly listen to what I say and then come and claim that I said something that I never claimed whatsoever. There. Right, you have a very, very good point, actually, or so we say, a point that I like very much. Uh, you have no evidence for that. I, I, that's not the point I really... I like that too, but that wasn't what I was going to say. You have no evidence, but it stands to reason as 95% of human-occupied Europe used to be covered in forest. That's a very good point. But you've overlooked one slight little thing 71% of the world is covered in water! So it stands to reason that most conflicts took part in the water. Yes, because most of the world is covered in water. These 95%, that's only on land. Now you might come along and say, hang on, hang on, people don't live in the water. Well, that's a just point, but it's irrelevant because people don't live in forests. And here you might say, hang on, hang on, hang on. I once read this thing, you know, and uh, it was about this village in the forest. That's incorrect. It was not a village in a forest. It was a village on a clearing in the forest. You see, um, most people were born in the forest and not at home because 95% of Europe was covered in trees. No. People don't go into a forest unless they have to. You've probably got no idea what a forest is. I'm not saying this because I say, oh, you're a town and you've never been out there. I'm saying that even if you've been in a modern day forest, you've got no idea what these 95%, I'm just thinking, I'm just taking your number, by the way. I've not researched if this is correct. I've heard it before, but I don't think it's really 95%. Uh, so your 95% of Europe are covered in forest. People do not just simply walk out there to do things unless they have a reason. If they want to live there, they clear a space. And it's not just sort of, this is the wall of the house and this is where the next tree starts, right? You have a nice space around the house too. Let's uh, assume in prehistoric times you've got one village here, one village there, and one of them decides to attack the other. Now, irrelevant to what their general state is, if they're always at war with each other, always at peace with each other, they're going to have some form of route, a road of some sort, a path, that leads between these two villages. The quickest way to get from one to the other is to use the road. Why is that? A forest is not just simply trees. There's a lot of scrub undergrowth and that stuff is sometimes extremely difficult to get through go out try it find out if you can uh, find a relatively old forest that has not been tended you see that if you go to a forest you're going to find something where there's a so-called forester and he clears away dead trees and things like that actually he's quite often going to chop down or have people chop down trees before they start falling down and rotting on the ground by themselves. Find a forest where that doesn't happen, okay? Nice lots of undergrowth and things like that. See how fast you can get through there. The fastest way is going to be a cleared path. So if you're in one village and you want to attack the other village, okay? You're going to move along the path. Unless, of course, you want to surprise them. Then, yes, you're going to go through the forest, you're going to sneak round, and guess what? You're going to come out of the woods into the clearing and then attack them. Now let's assume that you are in the other village and you're receiving the attack. You're somewhere in the woods all by yourself because you were hunting and you see 20 people coming along. You're not going to start shooting arrows at them because if they have archers and they shoot back, you're going to lose. So you're going to get reinforcements. In that case, we're going to be actually in this situation that you said was not so common, it's an organised battle. The moment you've got two groups saying, let's go and do it, it's an organised battle, right? All the same, 
you're going to avoid the actual conflict among the trees because trees get in the way, okay? It's irrelevant if you've got a club you want to swing at someone, if you've got a bow and arrow you want to shoot, you've got a sling with a stone, you've got a spear you want to throw, trees get in the way. So as long as you can choose, you're going to choose relatively open terrain. Obviously there's this thing, ah oh, well we might want to ambush them, so we want to be hiding in the bushes, not behind the trees, in the bushes. And then we pelt our arrows at them for instance. All the same. What I'm getting at is most people do not, or back then, most people did not spend most of their time in the forest. So to assume just because there's a lot of forest there, there's got to be most of the conflicts in the forest is as wrong as assuming, well, there's a lot of water and people did travel through the water, well, on the water, well, through occasionally as well. Just because there's a lot of water doesn't mean that most of the conflicts were in the water. Just because there's a lot of forest doesn't mean that a lot of conflicts were in the forest. Second, 95% of human occupied Europe, I suppose you're trying to exclude the Alps here, um, was covered in forest. What are we talking about? You see, there's something called the Neolithic Age. Neo means new, lithic doesn't mean they had new stones. But it was a time when people discovered agriculture and keeping herds, that sort of thing. And they started removing a lot of wood so as to have open pasture for their sheep or their cattle and were capable of growing crops. By the time we reached, reached the Bronze Age, the large forests that you're talking about, they weren't utterly gone, but these 95% were long gone before the Bronze Age, before people started recording history. So on the whole, We've got a lot of time that we can look back on where people had the technology of bows and arrows but did not have to live in forest infested Europe, right? And other places in the world would have been different terrain anyway, different situation. You've got a good idea, I think, but as you say, you've got no evidence and there are some thoughts in your thinking. On the other hand, of course, I don't have evidence. I cannot prove that uh, if, we, if we could go back in time, or if we could count every single person who died in a conflict or was wounded in a conflict, right, and then draw a line or just simply say that amount happened within forest and that amount happened outside of a forest, which is the larger half. We can't do that. We won't find out. But I'd like to point out, I never claimed that there were no conflicts in the wood, right? I just simply said, using his normal way of thinking, Lars shouldn't be doing this because he does not have historical pictures that show archers running around amongst the trees. The next one is a really nice one from TiVo77777. I hope that was five sevens. TiVo77777. People used to chase prey with throwing spears and that meant if they spooked the prey they had to march and march till the prey passed out. Science has proven that a lot of animals tire before humans do. If I, no, so if he was hunting a fox and spooked it he would likely want to jump and quickly shoot a few arrows before it got away, lest he have to march for hours to catch up with it. Dear TiVo, I don't swear in my videos, okay? Science has proven that a lot of animals tire before humans do. What a line of shit! Okay, start at the beginning though. People used to chase prey with throwing spears. Well, yes, no difference between throwing spears and arrows. In both cases, you want your first missile to hit and kill. Here, possibly also a misunderstanding. Um, if you, if you actually shoot something with an arrow, I assume using a throwing spear is the same situation. I have no experience there. If you shoot an animal with 
an arrow. What you see once again in Robin Hood films, Robin Hood, before he gets outlawed, shoots the deer, it drops dead, yes? That's a lucky shot. In most cases, even if you hit it directly in the heart, it's going to stagger, probably walk two or three paces, possibly even quite a while before it then drops dead. Okay, so ideally you want to shoot your animal, it drops dead, great. More common, you shoot it, you injure it mortally, okay, but you've still got to go a while to, to fetch it, yes? And what you don't want to do is wound it and it gets away and it runs much further than you can run, okay? Um, sorry, let's get back to what you said. People used to chase the spears and then, and then if they spooked the prey, they had to march and march till the prey passed out. Um, I understand the word spooked as in you frighten it. Right? So I shoot at the animal, I miss it, but it hears the sound of my arrow going through the bushes and it runs away. That's what I understand as spooked. I think you mean injured. Right? If you injure the prey and then you have to march and march until it passes out because it's bleeding to death. Slower than if you'd hit it in the heart or the lungs. Right? If we're talking about that, it's fine. If we're talking about, well, you miss the, uh, uh, the animal, right? and it runs away, then it's not going to pass out. We're talking about animals you would normally hunt. Deer, boar, foxes is something you're going to mention or have mentioned, right? These animals, I'm sorry, can run faster and much longer than you and I together. And I don't even know what condition you're in, right? I can safely claim that. Um, so yes, if you wound the animal, you don't necessarily want to march and march until it passes out. If you just frighten the animal, it's gone. End of story. Science has proven. I think you think that by saying science has proven, no one can argue against you. Because science has proven. Could you please provide that proof, right? The scientific proof from science that a lot of animals tire before humans do. Let's look at animals. Fish. I think it's safe to claim that way over 80% of all fish can easily outswim any human. Any human. Right? Anything small like that, you know, probably can't swim as fast as you and I could. Right? A pike just this size, not fully grown, can swim faster than you and can do this for a longer period than you and I can. Not just fish, take mammals that live in water, whales, dolphins, seals for instance. Now you can say this is unfair because these mammals and fish they are equipped to move fast in the water so let them swim through the water and us run across the land. It's still a fact, most of these can easily outpace us. They can swim faster than we can run. They can swim longer than we can run. What do fish do? They swim all day. Most of them. Not all of them. Some of them do stay in a place for quite a while. But on average most fish do a lot of swimming, right? And they do it all day. Birds. Now some birds walk on the ground but let's just stick to flying. Practically any bird you might encounter where you live can fly faster than you can run and can do it for a much longer period than you can run. So let's exclude them. Let's just stick to the mammals that live on the ground, on the earth, okay? Most animals tire before humans do. Um, I don't know, what are we talking about? Cats, dogs, the sort of ones, horses for instance, I bet horses tire long before you do. Cows don't really do much running on average, you know, the domesticated ones that you see. Have you ever seen a bull running, right? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know where you get this fantasy from that they tire before humans do. Let's just simply take the sort of animal you would hunt if you were here in Europe where I am, okay? I'll try and start at the top. I think that should be the elk, right? Uh, then we would have a bear, not many of them around, but they can be hunted, there are still a few there. 
idea um, then let's so say possibly I'll take the wharf as an exercise and then the wild boar uh, lynx, there's still a few of them around, and then we'll have foxes. I'll put hares and rabbits together. Squirrels, uh, you don't really want to shoot with bow and arrow at mice, so I wanted to stick to mammals. Uh, so, no, no poultry, so I'm sticking to mammals. I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost for a tenth animal right now. I'll just count in a second type of deer, okay? Now, all of these animals can run at a faster speed than you can. Did I mention mice? Um, I think I excluded mice because you can't, well, you can shoot with them at bow and arrow, but you don't hunt them for food. A mouse can run faster than you in speed, but due to your longer legs, you can cover a, a further distance than they can in the same time. All the same, these animals can run longer than you can run in speed and in distance. Where on earth do you take this fantasy from that science has proven that a lot of animals can outrun or uh, tire before humans do? That way around. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, this is one of the most idiotic things that anyone has ever commented under one of my videos. I'm going to leave it at that. If he was hunting a fox and spooked it, he would likely want to jump and quickly shoot a few arrows before he got away, lest he have to march for hours to catch up with it. Irrelevant if you spook or injure a fox. If it runs away, it's gone. End. Run for hours to catch a fox. You've got no idea what you're talking about. Let's assume you're in the woods, right? You see a fox. If you spook it, right, it's standing that way to you, okay, head here, tail, right, you see the whole length, okay, if it runs, choop, all you see is the tail. First of all, you've suddenly got a very small target compared to the one you had just now. It bolts, right, into the next bush, gone, end the story, you're never going to see that fox again, right, there's no, oh, you're going to have to track it for hours. A fox can lose you in open plains. You're not going to be tracking it for hours. Uh, uh, is all I can say to that. Sorry. If he was hunting a fox and spooked it, he would likely want to jump. Why? Okay, there's the ground, you're standing up. Jump! Okay, I, I, I think I understand what you're, you're talking about. You're, you're hiding in the bushes, right? And then quickly, because the fox is getting away, you want to jump out and shoot some arrows. Well, let's assume you can get five arrows in then. Each time you shoot an arrow and it misses, you're risking breaking that arrow, right? It could get stuck in a tree and you cannot dislodge it without breaking the tip, for instance. It's a possibility. When hitting the ground, it actually hits a stone and the shaft might actually snap. This is not something that has to happen every time you miss. But each time you miss, you risk that happening. So, a normal thinking archer would not want that necessarily to happen. There's no logic between, oh, I'm going to shoot lots and lots of arrows and I'm, I'm going to hit him with something, you know. There's no logic in that. I'm sorry. You want to hit and kill with one shot. And uh, there are certain things, for instance, if you are more in a sort of alpine area and there's a goat, a wild goat, that you hit, it can still outrun you and you can still see where it is, but it's too far away for you to reach. That is possible. But if we're talking about foxes, if a fox runs away, you know, you've had it. You're not going to see that fox again that ne next day. If you're out and you want to hunt a very specific type of animal. I want to go out and get a pheasant. And I walk around. I can't see a pheasant. There's a pheasant. Oh, right, okay. I'm going to hunt it now. Oh, it gets away. You're going to carry on looking for that pheasant. Yes. If you're generally out to find food, you see a fox. Oh, that would be a great thing. I haven't had fox for a long time. It gets away. You're going to look for something else. You're not going to chase one prey for hours. There's absolutely, seriously... No logic in your thinking whatsoever. I'm sorry if that was not a friendly response. 
David Post. What's up with everybody hating on the guy? Sorry, no, I'm going to read first, sorry. What's up with everybody hating on the guy? He can do something that no other archer can do at the moment. Get over it! What's up with a world where whenever someone does something great, even if it is great for the publicity of a sport they may be involved in, they have to attack him? He did imply to the side quiver, but apparently you may not have been listening. He talked about the side quiver, but when you need to fire, you grab two or three or more with the firing hand is what I recall him saying. But no matter what, you guys seem to have the hugest problem with the fact that he is so much better than you at a sport you have never had competition in. Thank you for ending that sentence. I bet none of your friends have bows and that being so you have never had anyone better than you and now that he's all over the web he's got everybody all buttered. Right you might have realized my first objection. Please do end your sentences occasionally. What's up with everybody hating on the guy? I don't really hate Lars Anderson. What I hate is the reaction from a lot of people who see his videos and then come up with this idea, oh, oh quivers are stupid altogether because you just got to hold them in your hand and you're ready to shoot at any time, the way he does, right? That's what I really hate. I dislike the fact that I'm I have no evidence for this, but I'm pretty sure Lars sort of wants this reaction. He wants people to say, wow, Lars Anderson, he's the guy that's doing it right. Everybody else is wrong. That's something I dislike. What I definitely dislike, I can differ with the fact that his narrator doesn't speak perfect English in a few of his videos. You know, that's something where I say, hey, it's no problem. I grew up with Germans who think they can speak English. I've heard worse, right? I don't like uh, that Lars comes up with these ideas, which is all right, but then says, this is historically correct because I have a picture where you can see it, right? People used to shoot like that. That's how they used to shoot. This is not an artistic design whatsoever. Archers used to shoot like that. They also had legs that are about 120% as long as the legs people have these days. So back then we can prove people had longer legs. Also, when shooting like this, they had arrows only this long. I don't know if you can see that. This long, right? They had short arrows with heads about that long because we see it on these pictures. When it comes to legs, arrow length and extremely large tips, I think Lars says, well, that's just artistic. But when it comes to how he's holding the bow, the artist who has no idea at what uh, the arrow tip should look like, has no idea whatsoever, seems to know exactly how to shoot. Lars picks out these points he wants to have proven and ignores any other mistakes. Blue horses, for instance, water that is in mountains and things like that. He just ignores that and says, ah, but what I want to prove is here and that's why it's got to be exact because you see it here. Everything else might be artistic. That's what really disturbs me. Sorry, now getting back to Mr. Post, I don't really hate the guy, but I can understand if it comes over as me hating him. All right. Uh, what's wrong with a word blah 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 blah, so I'm ignoring that. Oh no, sorry, um, he can do something that other archers cannot do at the moment. Was correct possibly a year or two ago. Since then, there are people who have copied his style of shooting. So, Lars is not really unique anymore. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. All right. Get over it, get over it yourself, uh, side quiver. Yeah, once again, um, to me, it's not really relevant if the back quiver or the side quiver is better or worse or whatever. It's just, as said, a lot of people took up this idea, back quivers are rubbish. And I'm saying, no, it's a situation. Once again, a reference to Red Dragon. Red Dragon? So, sorry, Red Dragon or Red Dragon? I'm so sorry. Um, please make a video in which you pronounce your name. How's that? Okay, by the way, I'm Broska. That's not pronounced very much either. 
Um, reference to your video where you have a back quiver and you literally turn it upside down and the arrows do not fall out, right? It's um, a question of the design of the quiver. If you don't get that right, well then things can go wrong. But that's got nothing to do with the position of the quiver. Right, uh, now David Post, what I'd like to get into is... Blah, 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 blah. Ah, uh, dear, where is it? Um, that is so much better than you. I bet none of your friends have bows. Look, you idiot. I'm not saying everybody has to watch all my videos. I'm not saying everybody has to watch my videos at all. But you could watch one or two of my videos. The very, very, very first video I uploaded on this channel, you don't see me, uh, you don't see any of my relatives, you see a dog amongst archers. Now there are two there that I definitely said, well, they're not, they're not friends of mine. They are acquaintances, right? But the very first video I uploaded is in an archery hall. So, and uh, there are one or two where you see me shoot in that hall. Uh, one of these videos where someone shoots at my leg. Despite that she shoots at my leg, I would still count her a friend. And that is her bow she's using. So, you bet none of my friends have bows. It's something you could have looked up easily, you know. You won't find me in Wikipedia, but just look at the other videos on the channel that I have here. You'll find that actually quite a few of my friends, most of which you can't see in my videos because I don't film most of my friends, but a fair proportion of my friends and family are archers, right? Anyway, so you bet that none of them have bows and that being so, I have never had anyone better than me. I started archery when I was 13 and for the first six years living in Munich within my age group I was always coming second there was always it wasn't always the same person it was always some different kid each year would best me at the Munich championships within the six years or so of my youth I have one gold medal and the rest is silver. I should get it out and make a picture. Uh, so yes, I have experience with being bested at that. And back then I took it better than just now, right? Uh, there was one guy, I hope he never sees this, a guy called Toby from the post uh, club in Munich. I was in the first Munich bow club and he was in the post club. And for our Jubilee tournament, he would always turn up and start to say, yeah, well, you know, I'm shooting so-and-so at the moment. How are you shooting? I said, I don't really count much. He would shoot the tournament and I beat him every time. You know? uh, in other tournaments, he beat me, but in my Jubilee tournament or my club's tournament, I always bested Toby. And there were one or two others who were better. Obviously, when I turned 21 and I came into the main archer class, I, I had hundreds of people, well, throughout the Germany, I had uh, hundreds of people who were shooting better than me, not within Munich or Bavaria. So I am used to people being better than me, but I was also used to being one of the best, on the other hand. Um, you couldn't know that, I'd just like to point that out. And on the whole, okay, I accept, Posty, that you've got a problem with people hating Lars Anderson, but um, you're not showing yourself as intelligent by claiming, you bet you know anything about me and why I'm hating this guy because I'm so used to no one being better than me. <sighs> I think that's a lovely note to end this video. Bye.